Yes, it did. From 1905 to 1945, 40 years, Korea suffered under Japan. And the suffering was every bit as intense as for the first and second Israels. I can read you all kinds of stories about that. Here's a little book by Kurt Koch, Victory Through Persecution. It talks about the Korean independence movement and the severe suffering Christians went through during that time. Japan was in Korea around the turn of the century, and they just defeated Russia, and Korea was, metaphorically speaking, flat on its back, exhausted. It wanted Japan to go home and leave them alone. But Japan told the world, we're going to help our little brother Korea, we're going to be here to help him, and the world said, wonderful, thank you very much, but Korea wanted Japan out. Japan forced itself on Korea. They forced the king to put his stamp on the treaty. And for 40 years, they suppressed Korea and really gave a hard time to the Christians, especially. Sometimes they herd everybody into a church and set it on fire. There are testimonies in this book about this kind of thing. So 40 years of intense persecution, it does fit this category. Secondly, national sacrifice. Whenever you have an offering for God, you must separate good and evil so that God can have his part and Satan can take his part. And just as Adam was divided into Cain and Abel, the Korean Peninsula is divided into North, Communism, and the South, Democracy. In the South, we have Theism, Idealism, and Democracy. In North, Juche, Self-Reliance Thought, Materialism, Atheism. They're, they're Communists. Um, Kim Il-sung is a false father. You have uh, this Juche thought. It, it's keen, pure, and simple. The 38th pill is that dividing line. One is God-centered, one is Satan-centered. You have your part of God's heart, the nation which God loves most. If the Messiah does come to Korea, God loves Korea deeply. But we've seen from this object partner, um, it's good if you have the same kind of feeling. If, if God is a happy, powerful God, sitting on the throne of heaven, waiting for the end of the world, then that's Christian theology and it doesn't make sense. But God, as we've seen in history, is suffering, is frustrated, is sad, is agonized, and a people who are one with God's heart would feel that same kind of experience. That is the nation of Korea. God is a suffering nation. Uh, God, Korea is a suffering nation. I teach Korean history, and in my studies, there has never been more than three consecutive generations that knew or experienced peace. Korea, there's this little book that you should all read, Korea Unmasked. It's a very, very good introduction to Korean psychology and perspective. This author says, Korea has been invaded more than 3,000 times in its history. It's a peaceful people. They just want to grow their eyes and enjoy the sunset and raise their kids. It's a very peaceful people. But they've been invaded and they have suffered blood, sweat, and tears. Even today, the movies, the language, the expressions, they are all very emotional. Someone mentioned to me, not uh, earlier that if you read the Korean version of the Chun Sun Gyeong, it's so emotionally intense. You read the English version, it's English, but the yeah. If you read the Korean language, it's much. They say that with Korean you can express very subtle emotions, much different than English. You can say I love you in English, but that you know. But in Korean, if you watch the Korean dramas. Half the time the person is just staring with no words and it just communicates volumes. Emotionally, Korean is very, very good that way. Um, movies, if you see some of the historical dramas, oh my goodness. The patriots in Korea suffered enormously and kept their faith and their loyalty and their feeling of piety usually and very, very nice. Um, there are people of righteousness. Uh, 
Don Gun, the mythical founder of Korea, established the nation and he taught the greatest good for the greatest number. He taught people how to worship God. And all through their history, from shamanism to Buddhism to Confucianism to Christianity to post-Christianity, and now they have also Islam and Hinduism, they always respected God, loved heaven. The more they suffered, the more they turned to God. If you read this book, at the depths of their suffering, they don't become atheists, they repent and turn to God as their last resort. That's the way Korean people are. They are dedicated to people's welfare and education, all the way from Dongun. They're very courteous. If you go into a department store, you may have 20 lovely young ladies serving you and bowing to you and asking if they can help you. You can't go anywhere without somebody helping. Even on a bus, total strangers will give you their seat, will greet you. Wonderful people of courtesy. Um, in Korean culture, as I said, for the last 2,000 years, God has prepared Korea. And if you read these stories, um, uh, Shim Jong and Chen Hong and Saki Shin, I don't know what that is. Yi Sin Shin. These are wonderful stories. Uh, the chastity of Chen Hong, who gave her promise to her husband many years before, and through hell and high water, she kept that faithfulness. Even at the risk of death, she never deviated. That kind of thing you find in Korea. Shim Chung, a daughter who gave her life so that her father could receive his sight. In a very wonderful story, she got thrown in the ocean, and the king of the ocean was so moved by her purity that he restored her back, and she finally found her grandfather. And Yi Sun Shin, uh, he was a Korean patriot, the founder of the turtle boats, who defeated Japan. He's a Korean patriot, although Japan hates him, but that's another story. And there's one more story, very quickly. It's called Hongbu Nobu, or Two Brothers and Their Magic Gourds. It's a very nice Cain Abel story. Very briefly, uh, a father was on his deathbed. He had two sons, Cain and Abel, older and younger. And before he died, he had them hold hands and promise he would be, they would unite them, and they died. So really, the Cain son became very good Cain, and his wife, a very good Cain, and the younger couple, a very good Abel. The younger couple tolerated all the abuse and persecution of the older couple until one day the young wife did something that caused the old wife to fly off the handle and they kicked them out. So the young son and his wife went to the forest, made a little garden, a little hut, just kind of existing. And one day the younger brother, walking along, found a bird. It had fallen from the nest, broken its wing, and so he took it home, mended it, and then released it. This bird was a spirit that flew back to heaven, told God about the heart of this good brother. And the next day it brought a seed, and the brother and his wife planted the seed. And the next morning it had grown into a big vine of gourds, and they were very curious. They broke it open. They were rich beyond belief. Gold, silver, jewels, you name it. Big brother has been watching this whole thing secretly all the time. And he gets excited, he goes out, he finds a bird, he breaks its wing, he tapes it up, lets it go. <laughs> it flies to heaven and tells God about this brother's heart. The next day, it brings a seed. You have to understand, in Korean culture, oftentimes your life reflects your lifestyle. So if you get blessing or fortune, it depends on how you are. This is Korean culture. 